Divine Truth Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus talks to Alexandra, a six-sphere Pleiadian woman, through an intermediary enter Klobuka. This discussion was held on the 22nd of April 2014 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello everyone, welcome again to our Divine Truth channel. This, today I've got Anto Klobukar with me and he's going to do some channeling uh, of some spirits or some mediumship. And of course all we're doing here is talking to people who have lived on earth and who are now living in different dimensions in the spirit world. So that's what we're going to do today. And there's apparently a, a woman spirit who would like to have a chat with me. So mm. Anto is going to attempt to channel her and I'll yep. attempt to have a chat. Yep, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for your time, Anto. No, thank you. Yeah. For the and thanks for Alexandra, who's also here wanting to channel through you. Mm. Mm. She's quite excited. Yeah. Good day. Mm. On that note, I am actually quite excited. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's been a while for me to be able to have the desire to talk to you. Mm -hmm. mm. We spoke many years ago, or as a group, spoke to you as a group many years ago. Yeah, I was present during that, that talk mm. you had with others. and mm. So, I'm a bit tongue-tied. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I had all these questions. <laughs> and they've all gone out of They've all mind, gone out they? of my mind. <laughs> I don't understand. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. There were questions associated. What, perhaps I can ask you a few things first. Um, mm. you, when I met you last, you were in the sixth sphere of the spirit world. I still am. And still are, yes. Mm. And I think we had a chat uh, with the group, a group of you who were all saying that you were Palladian spirits. Yes. Um, and, and some of the group attempted the suggestions that I gave them at the time. Indeed they did. And some of those group have since left your group, I understand. And I'd like to inquire where they went. Right. Well, um, we can ask them to come back if you would like, so they, they can tell you directly where they went. Mm -hmm. uh, would you like to do that? or I'd love the opportunity to, to meet yeah. them again. Well, I'm sure um, they'd be happy to come back. I'm just going to ask some people to find them and, uh, and we'll see where they are. Mm. And yeah, now, now they're willing to come back. So I'm sure they'll just take a little time finishing the things that they were doing. <laughs> so I'm sure they'll come back very shortly. Some of them have already come back, but mm. uh, others are still doing other things. And of course they'll come back when they finish those things. So if you ask some of the ones where they've been? All of a sudden it's become a big social activity. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hmm. Look, I am very grateful. I'd like to start with that at least. Yes. To, to show my gratitude. Sure. Hmm. Can I explain why they haven't come back sooner? I'd like to know that. that. Well, the primary reason why is when once you discover the different way, the way to God that I explained in the first century and have been explaining to people since, once you find that way, there are so many things in, to learn and so many things to do that, that you very rapidly forget yourself <laughs> in terms of uh, where, where you are and what you're doing. And as a, as, you know, a rule, you have a tendency then to, to go on discovering new things that excite you and so forth. And, it, and, it, and it's very unlikely for many people after that time to be drawn back to the, their old way of life, if you like. And so it's not that they don't uh, remember you or anything like that, but the only thing really that would draw them back is for you to have a desire to understand what's going on, which you now have, so hence they've returned to speak with you, and I'm sure they'll speak with you after we've spoken. I thought it was just a reflection of our relationship, something that I had done wrong. No. Obviously, uh, obviously they don't feel you've done anything wrong, it's just that they've discovered new things that they wish to pursue and as a result uh, have spent most of their time doing that and mm. that required them going back and visiting the third dimension of the spirit world and they spent some time there and then they spent some time in the fifth and the seventh and then eventually some of them have become 
at one with God through that process in that time, which was like nearly, what, five, four or five years ago that we spoke last. You understand that they were my teachers at yes. that time. Yes, yes. Um, mm. And it's been quite lonely mm -hmm. without them, and mm -hmm. we've had to learn things for ourselves and start to explore things. Yes. And I've been wondering, what was it that they were seeking to learn and what took them away from us? And what was it that we're not willing to learn for ourselves? Well, do you remember the conversation we had last time very well at all? Or it's been if, a, some time since then, so you've done a lot been of things. some time. Yeah. I must say, there were a lot of things that I did not absorb, did not understand. Correct. Yep. And in a way, it felt like I didn't hear what you said. Yes. In other words, it was difficult for you to understand what's being said because it almost felt like I was speaking a different language then, and yet you could understand the words but not understand the actual meaning of the words in most of the cases. Yes. Yes. Whereas the, the people who had been guiding you, who I was also talking to at the time, they decided to undertake some experiments which you were unwilling to undertake, if right. you remember at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the experiments that they were willing to undertake? It related to exploring feelings and correct how they felt about God. Correct. So, and there was, so there were basically three things I suggested to them. There was firstly this idea of feelings versus the intellect. The second concept was that God wasn't within them and that they weren't a part of God, but rather God had created them and God was an entity with whom they could have a relationship. And the third thing was to experiment with the third dimension about what they had not learned in the third dimension or the third sphere of the spirit world. In other words, I suggested they go back to the third sphere of the spirit world and learn some things in that sphere. Mm, you spoke about experimenting. Correct. Mm. Now, they were willing to undertake those experiments. So they started to undertake with some guidance from other spirits that I brought to them. They undertook some experiments regarding their emotions some experiments regarding their relationship with God and some experiments regarding things that they, you know, finding things that they had not learned when they were in the third dimension of the spirit world. So they were willing to do that and you had a degree of uh, a little, what, what I would now classify as fear, but which you don't see as fear. No, I but see you, it as residence. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Um, but you had actually some fear that caused you to not follow their course of action and instead remain where you are. And as a result, um, you felt a bit lonely because the teachers that you had left you, but, but they had to leave you in order to undertake these experiments. And because you were unwilling to go along with them, of course that meant that you would have to be separated. Hmm. One of the things I'd like to talk to you about is God. I know at the time I was very shut down to the concept of that. Mm -hmm. I did feel that we were, and we were learning Yes. The very fact that we were gods in a way. Correct. And that we could create. And you explained things that we were only creating laterally. Yes. And yes. that so was very confronting to hear. Yes, because it, you were thinking you were progressing. Yes. But you were remaining in the same location. I mean, it took me a long time to get here. Mm -hmm. Indeed, for all of us, it took yes. us. So how, how many years did it take for you personally to get there? Um, it was close to 350 years. Yes. Mm. So for 350 years, you spent progressing through the first to the sixth dimensions. Yeah, I was very disciplined and followed what everyone was saying. And, yeah. You know, and, and eventually you arrived at the sixth dimension. And it's quite exhausting. Yes. <laughs> as, you, as you understand. Yeah. Yes. Because you, you had to undertake the process through all of your own effort. Yes. And uh, there was no one really who could assist you aside from your teachers. That's right. And, and even they could not help you make the transition. You had to make the transitions yourself. That's right. Yes. Hmm. And so by the time we reach the sixth dimension of the spirit world, usually because we've had to undertake such a large effort and because we've had to under, you know, do all of the actions ourselves, we often have quite a high... Uh, or, or, or sort of viewpoint of ourselves and that's why many people who have arrived in the sixth dimension think of themselves as gods. Mm -hmm. In addition, because of the power they have in that place, they have the ability to create quite remarkable things in comparison to other people in the first to the fifth dimensions and so they see themselves as having reached the pinnacle of their own development. And, and, and that's kind of the conundrum that I've faced because mm -hmm. I feel like I can do that and then yeah. 
where would God fit in within all that? Um, Correct. And if there is a God, wouldn't that God have given me that ability to do that? Well, the reality God is there is a God, so we'll talk about that in a minute in more detail. But also God has given you the ability to, to grow beyond the sixth dimension, but only if you follow his way of doing it. And up till now, you have been following your way or ways that other men or women have taught you to follow rather than following God's way. Now, of course, it makes sense that God would only have one way, right? And all of the different other paths that man has created are all just men's creation. And when I say men, I'm using it collectively as men and women's creation, humankind's creation. Right. And as a result of humankind's creation, there is a limit to which you can develop. And you have reached that limit. So you can only develop yourself, your soul, to the point of reaching the sixth dimension using the techniques you've already learned. Okay. You, you must learn a different technique if you are going to progress beyond the sixth dimension. And there are actually, at this point in time, 36 dimensions. So there are still many more uh, dimensions above you where you could progress to, and therefore exponentially many more powers that uh, will be given to you through that process. But, but they all come from God, and without a personal relationship with God, progress to the next dimension is not possible. Could, could you kindly explain also you say god created did, did god way. create the way yes. yes did god create the space the dimensional space that we currently live in and yes how does that sit in with did not god create adam and eve and did they not yes arrive on earth in this state dimensional in space, this dimensional yes. space correct and what, what did God assign for them to learn in order to... Well, God doesn't assign for you to learn anything. God leaves it up to you, the exercise of your will as to what you learn. So God's not going to tell you what to learn. God's going to wait for you to exercise your will. And then God will show you what you can learn once you've exercised your will in a certain direction to know things. So if I give an example of that, if you, in the first dimension, if you can remember back to when you were in the first dimension, which was mm. just shortly after you arrived in the spirit world, yes? Mm. Um, if you think of it back at that point now, you realise that you had a lot of things to learn, and in particular a lot of things to learn about love. There was a many things. Yes. And, and you hadn't learned them on earth because mm. you didn't exercise your will to learn them. Does that make sense? Yes. There were opportunities that you had available to you on earth to learn about love, but unfortunately, you didn't take those opportunities. Or I learned what I had desired to learn. Correct. You, learn, you only took on what you desired at the time. Okay. And that's the way God works, in fact. You, you will only learn the things that, God, that, that, that you desire to learn at the time. Even though God would like you to learn everything possible, it's, a, it's only up to you as to what you will eventually learn. Even if I didn't, at the time, I sort of in a defensive statement... I guess, um, I didn't feel I had the capacity to. I agree, yes. Uh, you know, you had issues of self-worth where you didn't believe yourself to have the capacity. But you, if you think about it, there were many other issues too. Mm. Like there was a resistance to anger and a resistance to fear and yeah. these kind of things present, prevented you from learning. And th th if we look at what prevents the average person coming from Earth learning in the spirit world, there is a lot of emotions. If we're honest with ourselves, we'll see a lot of emotions that cause people to not desire to learn new things. Yes. And you passed over into the spirit world with many of those emotions. Correct. So, so of course, that meant there was some resistance. Now, fortunately, you found some people who tried to assist you to progress beyond that point. And eventually, they, they, they were teaching you their way of progression. Yes. And they taught you how to eventually circumnavigate the different spheres. So in other words, you could go from one sphere to another sphere and you learnt that if you progressed on certain issues, and particularly if you look back on it, you will see that they were issues of love that you had to progress on. Hmm. You will see that you then we were allowed to enter the next dimension and so forth. And you were right. They were telling me what, to, what I need to do next at every step. Correct. But where... So you always had someone who you could see sort of nursing you through the process, if you like. Correct, right up until the sixth sphere. Right up until the sixth sphere. And even during the sixth sphere, there were many people who, who were well-established as your teachers. Mm. They weren't progressing in the sixth sphere either. So they were, they were thinking laterally rather than progressing vertically. 
And you, you also weren't progressing vertically, you were progressing sort of horizontally, if you like, sharing in new things, having more experiences, but not really progressing in the soul. And this is why none of you, including the teachers, could progress beyond that point. Right. Does that make sense? And the only way to progress beyond that point is to actually involve God in your progression. And God isn't you. God's not you. God is a, God is a being who created you. And that, that has been yep. a challenge to accept that. Yep. Mm. And then it's a, the real challenge is actually not just accepting that, but, but actually entering a personal relationship with that God. And that's where many of us have, have had numerous discussions. Yes. And any amount of discussions don't enter you with a relationship with God. Have you found that? Well, <laughs> this is a conundrum. Yes. We don't understand whether it's true or not. Like, yes. We haven't been able to verify this. And you will not be able to verify it unless you do one or two primary things. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how God communicates with his children. So you and I are both God's children, yes. and it's very important if we're ever going to have a relationship with God that we learn how to communicate with God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So if we think about ourselves as God's child and God being God, full of love, and you've seen the evidence of this love in the universe around you. Yes. So once you see this evidence of love, you saw the evidence of love, the fact that you, although you haven't met Ammon and a man, the first human couple, Adam and Eve, you, you've heard that they arrived on earth in a sixth year condition, the condition you are in now, and they uh, somehow lost that condition. Yeah. And the question is, how did they lose that condition? It's an interesting question. I've been focused on the question of how to achieve the status that they were actually in. Yes, but you've already there. done that. Yes. And yet you're not in the position where you're communicating with God and you're also not in the position where you've progressed beyond the sixth dimension. Okay. So were Adam and Eve communicating to God whilst they were They were offered the chance to, yes. Right. And they rejected it. And they rejected it because they wanted to be gods themselves. Does that sound familiar? Very familiar. <laughs> You can see that many people you meet in the sixth dimension have the same feeling, don't they? Yes. That they want to be gods themselves. They want to be the, their own, if you like, their own ruler of their own kingdom uh, and their own selves. Would you be able to explain why is that, that is the case? I mean, is it simply because we've been taught that belief system? or No, because a mon and a man were not taught that belief system. So mm. it's a belief system that you can allow to actually be, you can encourage it within yourself and eventually you can act upon that belief system and, and withdraw from God, which is what Amon and man did. But they had an offer, you said, from God. They did. And you have had an offer for the last 2,000 years available have to I? you as well, without knowing. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know how that's possible, but yes. I'd like to know. Yeah. So, so what I would like to explain first is how they lost it how they lost their, their offer, if you like, of that, receiving that love. They decided they wanted to be gods themselves. So they decided they wanted to act independently of God's laws and independently of God's love. Why would that be the case? Well, they decided that they could be God themselves. So they decided that they didn't need God, that they could become the same as God in power and glory. Yeah, and I've always wondered about that, when and they made in the image of God. They decided to make that that effort to become gods themselves and in the process of doing that they rejected God's love which would have been the only thing possible to make them progress. So what happened is they regressed and so the fifth dimension was created, the fourth dimension was created and within a, just a few hundred years eventually the first dimension was created because the laws of God allow for the creation of these dimensions. I see. So the laws of God are a structure, if you like, a structure in which all of the universe, including the human soul, lives. And the laws allow for the creation of universes, depending on the condition of the individual. And if the condition of the individual regresses in love, then a lower dimension is created. And you've examined the lowest dimensions. It's been some time since you've been to the first dimension, mm. but you've examined them. You can see the horror even that exists in some dimensions. And we've felt that we've been a part of that. That as mankind, humanity, we've created that. Yes, 
And, and that is true, you, we have, but, but if we look at it truthfully, we can see that actually we didn't need to. We decided to do it because we wanted to become gods. In other words, we wanted to be our own rulers of ourselves and we wanted to ignore all of God's laws and all of God's principles of love. Mm. And this is the main reason why we created those darker dimensions. Does that make sense? Yes. And in the first century, God offered the gift of God's love again. And when I was in the first century, I recognised that offer and I became the first person, but not the only person, to accept that offer. What did you recognise? I recognised that God had a personal love for us and that God wanted us to feel this love, but we had to open up emotionally in order to feel the love. So what I realised was that it wasn't an intellectual process. It was an emotional process that I had to go through. Does that make sense? Mm. Love is an emotion, and as such, it's an emotional process that you need to go through with God in order to receive God's love. And what I recognised is that I had to go through an emotional process and that God wanted me to go through this emotional process. It was just whether I was willing to go through it or not as to whether I would do it. In other words, it was my exercise of my own will that determined whether I would take the offer that God had offered me. See, that to me is very difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. But I'm feeling certain other things, mm -hmm. which is conflicting my thought process. Yeah. Perhaps you can firstly tell me why it's difficult to understand, and then we can focus a little bit on the emotions you feel that mm. conflict with your thoughts. <laughs> you need to exercise your free will in order to, to feel, to, to, do any, to take any action. Correct. So you would have had to have your free will exercised to feel this possibility of receiving a love from God. Correct. I had to make that decision myself. Even to recognise it exists. Correct. Yes. I had the fortunate uh, introduction to the earth in the, in the first century in that my parents were open to emotion to a certain degree. And then as soon as I was born, God assisted me through this process by just removing the low self-worth that I had from my parents. And that helped me recognise when God was offering me something. Does that okay, make sense? I understand. And God done that because God had to do it with someone. Like, and and, and I'm, I'm supposing God would have done it with anyone. It just turned out that um, I was open to that process and so I undertook the development that God was offering me at the time. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. I could have rejected it just like a man and a man did, but, but I chose not to. So the difference with us is we don't have that opportunity, but... You do have the opportunity. We have the opportunity to exercise, as you say... Your will. Our will. In, in other words, your will to emotionally receive love from God. Mm. And the difference being that I'm referring to is now we're being taught that there is an existence of... Correct. ...that being. In my case, I didn't have anyone to teach me aside from God. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, because nobody sense. else had received it, so nobody else could teach me about it. Mm -hmm. but, but all I had to do is I had to let, go where God led, led me and eventually I learned that it was a possibility. So in my teenage years in the first century, I learned that it was a possibility for me to receive this love and so I asked for it. And when I say I asked for it, I, didn't, I don't mean that I said, please God, give me your love. I had to have a feeling that I wanted God's love developed within my soul, within myself, within my emotions. Now, at the moment, you believe your soul is your spirit body, but that's not the case. Yes. Right? And so you are made up of a spirit body and a soul, or you are, to be more accurate, you are one half of a soul. But this one half of the soul can exercise its will in order to desire emotionally to receive God's love. And that's what I called prayer. So when I referred to prayer, I, I meant that it was an emotional, passionate desire a sincere and pure longing inside of your own heart to receive love from God. Mm. And what I found was that as I received love from God, I started changing. And then I recognised that actually the only way to change beyond the sixth dimension of the spirit world was to actually receive love from God. Unless you have a personal relationship with God, you will not progress beyond the sixth dimension of the spirit world. Mm. And there are many, many people who have proven that. In fact, you are proof of that today. Mm. Does that make sense? It's very logical. Yeah. So God created this way because there were certain things in the universe that you cannot understand with your mind. 
And the only way to understand them is to experience them with your emotions. And there are literally billions of things in the spirit world that you can't understand with your mind, that you can only understand with your emotions. And this is the reason why all the discussions you've had haven't benefited you about the subject. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Unless you engage the emotional process, you will not progress beyond your current location. So we're using the incorrect tools. Correct. The means. That's right. So God's offered this beautiful gift of God's love to everyone, but whether you accept it or reject it is very much dependent upon the use of your own will. And you need to use your will to receive or desire to receive God's love. And, and love being an emotion re requires an emotional prompter. It requires an emotional exchange. So if you think of all the things that you express when you're in the sixth dimension, there are times when you express love with each other and they are, aren't they, the most joyful times? It's extremely yeah. exciting. Mm. And then when you go out looking for information or knowledge, many times uh, we do that without really considering love as our first thought. And as a result, that's not quite as joyful generally as having interactions with other people in the sixth dimension that, that are based around love. Mm. And this is how you learnt that love was important. This is how you learnt to develop your own love. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you have developed your own love to the pinnacle of your own creation now, and without God, you cannot develop your love further. And the illustration I have frequently used with other people all the way through the last 2,000 years is this illustration that a water course cannot flow higher than its source. So if the source is the natural human love that comes from inside of a human, then the love that is ever flowing out of that person cannot ever be higher than the pinnacle of the natural love inside of the human. So is that the level of sens emotional sensitivity we have within us? Um, no, it's, uh, the... it's more to do with the amount of love that you have within you that is naturally expressed from you to other people. And to express love does require emotional sensitivity but it also requires desire for you to love another. It requires, you know, a passion for the other person or for the thing you're loving. It requires a number of things besides just emotional sensitivity. Mm. Yeah. But at some point, the natural love that's inside the human it reaches a certain point and it can't progress anymore because there's no love that's any higher that can come from another human or another being outside of that human in order for the love to raise to a higher condition. The only way that love can reach beyond the pinnacle of the human development is for love to come from an outside source. And that outside source is God. Okay. And I learnt that this outside source wanted to love me and all, all God wanted was to, for me to be open to receiving this love. But it required that I was allowed myself to be emotionally sensitive. In other words, it required that I allowed myself to feel emotions and release emotions of error or emotions that were unloving from myself by experiencing them and embrace the emotions that were loving from God. So what was the essence of that drove your free will to desire more of that? Well, I, I've always thought this, and this is, um, I feel, a pretty logical thing to think, but I, I realise that not many people historically have ever thought it. But the way I thought was this. I could spend all of my life examining the creation to learn about things, or I could connect directly with the person who created all of those things and find out about them that way. Mm -hmm. and, and I logically thought that it would make more sense to connect with the person who created everything and have that person tell me about everything than it would be to go around having to experiment about everything to discover it all myself. In a way, I believe that, but mm. I guess I was talking to the wrong person. Yeah. So, so uh, if you think about how you've learned up to this point, you've learned by listening to others, right? Mm. And all I'm suggesting is instead of listening to others who can only develop you to a certain point if they have not received God's love, you are better off listening to God. Because God's your creator. God wants to have a relationship with you. It's just whether you desire the relationship in return. Mm. Now, what's happened is that the spirits who I talked to four or five years ago in your company, they did desire to make that experiment. So they took the chance to take that experiment and run with it. And as a result, they found that they received some of God's love 
and they started understanding new things that they didn't understand before. Okay. And as a result, they progressed to different dimensions where you can't go at the moment. Does that make sense? Yes. And because of their progression and their interest in such progression, their focus came, became more about their development of their relationship with God than it came, became to understand God's creation. And what they found was that because they developed their relationship with God first, all, these other, all the other knowledge got added to them in a much more rapid way because God was telling them through this relationship how everything else worked. Hmm. And that's what I meant in the first century when I said, seek first God's kingdom or seek first God's love and all these other things will be added to you. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so what I'm suggesting to you is that you undertake the same experiments that your friends undertook four years ago. So what did they find in God's kingdom? Well, may I say something at this point? You're going to ask a series of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many questions, I guess. <laughs> and you want to ask those questions because you want to know the answers before you take the experiment. And my suggestion is to do it the other way around now. To do the experiment and then see what happens. You are aware there's, there's many groups where we all meet and we talk about this. Mm -hmm. And... And all of you have what I would classify as fear about undertaking experiments. <laughs> and, log and yet we... You don't call it fear. We don't call it fear. We <laughs> you say, unless we can see the positive result of doing it, then there's no point in doing it. But, hmm. but to be frank with you, you've already seen the positive results with the visitors that have come to you just now through, during this conversation. We have. So... so you are seeing the positive results and yet you're still not undertaking the experiment. And so there has to be a reason why. Hmm. Does that make sense? Like to, to claim that you've got to see positive results first before you undertake the experiment or logically analyze that there may be positive results and then not undertake the experiment when you have positive results given to you, it means that you're fooling yourself somehow. Um, I'll be truthful. Yeah. I do want some sort of surety. Yes. Um, what, what's the surety you want? What, what is it that you want before you start? I won't be harmed. That you won't be harmed. Why are you worried about being harmed? It's been many, many years since you've ever been harmed. That's why I say I'm being conflicted. Yeah. Because can you see there is still emotions in you? Yes, That you thought were no longer in you. And these things have been coming up quite rapidly. And yes. And the, and the more we discuss this, the more your soul dominates. And there is actually a, te a teaching of God's that talks about soul domination. And what it is, is that no matter how much you develop intellectually, your emotions in your soul will eventually dominate you. And that's not a bad thing. What you need to do is to learn not to act upon emotions that are negative. It just feels, to a degree, like you're out of control in a way. Correct. Um, and God basically is asking you to be out of control for a bit so that God can show you what you can learn when you're out of control. <laughs> so the question is, whose free will is this? Is it me? Or, yes. I don't think I'm exercising that free will, but something else is... This is your soul starting to have an awakening. So you, when you talk about free will, you're talking about my soul exercising. Your soul exercising it. At the moment, you've been thinking you've been exercising free will, but the exercise of your thoughts are not freely thought, in fact. The reality is your soul dominates your thoughts. And what you've been attempting to do is to suppress your thoughts and resist them. Do you understand? And so this is how you've progressed up to now. You've progressed by suppressing negative thoughts. But as you can see, some of these negative feelings still result, re revolve and, and are still inside of you. Yeah, no matter what I've done to no suppress No matter what them. you've done to suppress them, they still exist. Mm. Right? You've only been less conscious of their existence. And because you've had more enjoyable experiences, it's been easier for you to be less conscious of the existence of these emotions that are within you. It's just a remarkable feeling when you get to that point where it creeps up on you. It's unexpected. Mm -hmm. and Correct. Yeah. Especially... And this is not a bad thing. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> You're still feeling it's a bad thing, but it's not a bad thing. I guess it's in me. I don't understand why, but... Well, these are, some of these emotions will be emotions that you've suppressed for all of your life in the spirit world and also for a lot of your life on earth. Does that make sense? 
See, I, the moment I had the feelings, I had this instant desire to talk to the person who changed everything for, from, yep. for our teachers. Yes. And, you know, I'm grateful for... I just get overwhelmed by the opportunity to talk about it. Yeah. And I don't... But this is also you being overwhelmed with emotion for, a lo for, the, fir from, for the first time for a long time, isn't yeah. it? It's extremely yeah, difficult. Yeah. But if you can allow it, see, the way the soul expands beyond the sixth dimension is by being allowing itself to be overwhelmed with emotion. And the most overwhelming emotion you are ever going to experience is God's love. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If God is an infinite being, then it means that God must have a lot of love. Mm. So every time you connect to God and start to receive some of God's love, it makes sense that you're going to be overwhelmed emotionally. I mean, we do, ch we do cherish the concept of love. I mean, Yes, I know you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You would not have arrived in the sixth dimension without cherishing the concept of love. Correct. Yeah. Mm. But you've not cherished the concept of God's love. No, no. You've cherished the concept of the love that's within yourself. And what I'm suggesting to you is there is a far greater love than the love you have within yourself. I mean, it, just to describe, it feels soothing just to Correct. have this very short feeling that I've had. Correct. Because in the process, we release things, you know, that are negative inside the soul. But also in the process, we feel the love coming from someone outside of us into us. And if there were spirits around you noticing, they would notice just a little bright entry in your crown chakra all of a sudden beginning there for a little bit of time while you allowed yourself to be overwhelmed emotionally. Mm. They would have noticed that happening. Now that's coming from outside of you. And there's your proof that God exists. Immediate. Mm. So God just told you God existed. And God just told you God has love for you as long as you're wanting to receive it. Just in that one moment, you've been told more than one thing that you didn't know before. Such a simple process. It's a very simple process. This is, it's so simple that a little child can, can embrace it. And this is the reason why many great minds have never embraced it. But it's been so difficult to get to something so simple. Correct. Yeah. And mostly it's because of our own resistance. Mostly it's because of our own arrogance and our own belief systems and our own opinions of how great we are or whatever that causes us to avoid something that is just so simple. Doesn't make any sense, really, does it? It doesn't make any sense. It goes against everything I've learned. Yeah. And what I feel to a degree. Yeah. But you can see the sensation exists. Yeah. And if the sensation exists, surely that is proof that there is something in it. The reality is the sensations have always been there, but yeah. it's just. But you've suppressed them. Mm, it's like an irritation that you. Correct. You, you've felt them, and then what you've tried to do is run away from them. Yeah not acknowledged. You've them. resisted them, you've not acknowledged them, you've denied them, you've suppressed them and as a result God can't communicate with you because the way God communicates with you is through the flow of this love into your soul. Does that oh. make sense? Mm, I feel like my life's been wasted in a way. Well, we can waste a long time by rejecting the truth about God. Now unfortunately many of us didn't ever know the truth about God so you know unfortunately many of us uh, rejected in ignorance, I suppose you could say. There are others, of course, that have been offered God's love and rejected it without there being ignorance. So there's been many people over the last 2,000 years who have attempted to offer God's love or show that God is offering God's love to others. But those people who they've been talking to have rejected the opportunity. And if you think over your past in the last 350 years, there's been quite a number of bright spirits who have come to try to talk to you about God's love at different times. Can you remember what you did at each time? I just hid away. Yeah. So you stayed away from them. Mm. And do you remember why you did that? I was just afraid. Mm. And I don't understand why I was afraid at the time, but it was an instant reaction. Yes. Yep. And so that's the exercise of your will. And this is one reason why we feel fear is a major problem on the planet, because if people were less afraid, they might take more opportunity to receive God's love and grow much more quickly. So the fear in my soul dominated my choices. Correct. And unfortunately, that fear came from your childhood experience in, the, in your life on earth and your whole experience, in fact, in your life on earth created this fear. 
that you were unwilling to feel? See, to a degree, I, I feel I'm not no much wiser, none the wiser. <laughs> well, you've had the experience of getting to the sixth dimension, so you obviously have wisdom on a lot of areas, particularly the areas of natural love. You have the you have wisdom about all these aspects of involving love, what's a loving thing to do with other people. Mm. But I agree, you do not have wisdom at this point about God's yeah, way of doing things. In this process. And so it'll feel very strange for a while because all of a sudden you'll be learning who, heaps of new things that you didn't, that you already thought you knew. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm. And so this is where it requires humility on your part. And it requires that you see that you are not as great as God is and that you need to allow yourself to communicate with God in order to receive the truth from God. Mm. Mm. I do feel there's many things I'd like to learn. Yeah. Just speaking to, can you feel what's in my soul? Can mankind actually do that? Yes, they can. You, you know that you can feel what's in the soul of others at times, can't you? But you're used to six fear spirits only being able to do that. Mm. Is that not true? Yes. Yes. But I've been the, confused about. The reality is once you become open and sensitive in your own soul from an emotional perspective, you can actually feel everyone around you who's of your own development and lower. What about my own soul? You'll be able to start feeling what's in your own soul. In fact, that's essential for you to feel your own soul. It's essential for you to feel what's really in it. And partly that's what you've done just today. Just mm. by going through that process, you felt some things. Like before, when we started this conversation, you didn't want to acknowledge that you had any fear. No. And now you say, you, you're actually <laughs> seeing that you do have some fears. Yes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. So all of a sudden you are sensitive to the fact that, oh, fear, there are some fears still there inside of me that I can feel. Mm. And what happened is God's love that's flowed into you has exposed those fears to you. So now it's up to you whether you want to feel about them or not. Okay. And you have the choice still. Like God's not going to force you to feel them. You have the choice to feel them. You're allowed to choose to not feel them if that's what you want. But I would suggest don't do that because you won't progress if you do that. Mm. Uh, you know, that's the way people stay stagnant, by yeah. not feeling. I mean, I feel much better just having this small feeling. Yes. You imagine once you release many of these other fears and you accept more of God's love, how much better you're going to feel. And it's going to be very, very different than the experience you've had up to now. So God's love itself, it will do the transformation. Correct, but only if you allow it. So the secret for the human is for the human to allow the transformation. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And what's been happening up until now is you have not been allowing the transformation. You've been denying the transformation, resisting the transformation, suppressing the process of transformation. So that means, of course, you've been using your will to stop the transformation. And not emotionally seeking the love. Correct. You're not emotionally desiring that God, you know, at the time and up until now, you have not been emotionally desiring that God gives you love. And so as a result of that, you've been resisting God's love. God's love requires a conduit in order to flow. And the conduit is referred to as the Holy Spirit. And this spirit can only connect with you when you have a sincere and pure, pure truthful longing for the love to flow. And that's, that's the little bright light that happened on the top of your crown chakra when you started to have a little bit of that longing to feel God rather than just you know, talk about God. Hmm. I feel I do have a desire to learn now about that. Yeah. Now, there's many spirits who, who are willing to help you, and, and there are some of your old friends who have also learnt about this way, that they are willing to help you as well, and you'll meet many new people as well mm. who will be willing to help you on the way. And so they can help you and assist you uh, with a lot of pictures and, and things like that in, in far faster than what I can verbally spend time with showing you. So my suggestion now is that you allow yourself to have that interaction with them and to begin to trust what they say to you, even though it is very foreign to the intellectual development that you've had up till now. I understand. Yeah. And Do that's what I would suggest to all of the ones who are with you too. I know there's a, a number of you who are listening to the conversation and yes. I would suggest that you all make the same experiment, that you'll try the same experiment. So rather than talking about <laughs> it, my, suggest is, my suggestion is to engage in an experiment with God. Now, of all people, God is not going to harm you. 
God created a beautiful loving system and as you know God is only loving so God is not going to harm you there, so there is no harm that you can come to by experimenting with this relationship with God why do I fear God well that is because of what you were taught when you're on earth if you examine some of the teachings that you imbibed when on earth, what, what were those teachings? Can you remember? About God. What were the teachings about God? God well, was punished. Yes, that yeah. God would be punishing. Mm. There were acts done in the name of God. Correct. That were violent. Very violent. Yes. And if you think about your parents, at times they were also abusive and punishing. Extremely. And as a result, they taught you that people who said they loved you sometimes punished you. Mm, I had to. They do a lot of things in the false name of love. Correct. And you know that now. Yes. And this is one reason why you're still afraid of God, is because you still have a feeling inside of you that that's how God is. So am I projecting an image? You are. You and are projecting an image from your childhood onto God, and that has caused you to have a lot of fear about connecting with God, which has meant that you've been primarily trying to develop without God because you just have so much fear associated with God. So is that a form of rebellion, for a better word? Um, not really. I feel primarily what it is, is that, is that unfortunately on earth, many people have had the experience of being abused in the name of love. They're being told that they're being loved while they're being harmed. And unfortunately, we are also told that that's what God does. So if you look at most of the holy scriptures on earth, you know, the Koran and the Bible and other types of books, most of them suggest that punishment is, a for, is, is something that comes from God, from the personality or nature of God. And as a result, we grow up believing that God has some of those feelings. Mm. It's not true, of course. Um, and when I say of course, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> for it to be true if you think about it, because God created love, so therefore God would be able to love purely without the desire to punish and without the desire to control or harm others. So it makes no logical sense that God would be like that. But for most of us, it makes emotional sense because that's how we were brought up to believe. And our parents enforced that emotional belief through their own abuse and violence. Mm. So many of the times we came to the spirit world, we come into the spirit world believing that God's a certain way when God is not. Or we believe that there's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as the entity of God. Mm, I uh, didn't want to recognise the entity of God. Yeah. yeah. So my suggestion now is to allow yourself to see, start to see that you have a lot of false beliefs about God that, will, that are emotional, that come from your life on earth, and that these beliefs need to be released. And they, the only way they're going to be released is for you to experience the sadness of some of them. Okay. And once you allow that to occur, and ask for God's and long for God's love to come to you, you'll find that process very easy. It'll, it'll come to you quite naturally once you long for God's love to come. And as long as you remain open to your emotions and allow yourself to be emotionally overwhelmed, you will progress quite easily. Does that make sense? But as soon as you close down your emotions and you do not allow yourself to be emotionally overwhelmed, you'll find progression very, very difficult. That is okay. Hmm. Mm. And you have many people around you who want to assist you and many of them have learnt how to do this. They've learnt how to progress in love and they've learnt how to progress towards God and they now see God as an entity. They don't see themselves as God, they just see themselves as God child, God's child. And these people can assist you. They are brighter than you in their appearance, so you'll be able to recognise them. You'll be able to easily recognise the ones who have learnt a bit more about God than you have. And mm. my suggestion is ask them the questions, but just one point of uh, that's really important to understand don't just ask questions and intellectually try to get the answers try the experiments mm. does that make sense emotionally try the experiments emotionally because if you just talk about the issue and you intellectually argue with these people and don't do anything emotionally you will find nothing will happen the only way we can progress towards God is by following God's way and that is an emotional way it's a way of receiving God's love into the soul and that requires the exercise of your will emotionally, not the denial of your emotions. I feel I have the capacity to do that. Mm. I'm not speaking for everyone. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. And it, it is the choice of every individual whether they make this choice or not. And I recommend to people to make that choice, but 
the reality is that uh, many people possibly will not. Now, can I just also remind you that you have actually attended some of my seminars in the spirit world in the sixth dimension. If you think about the last few hundred years of your life, mm. do you remember there's been times when Jesus has come to the sixth dimension and talked? There have been many gatherings. Yes, and you've been present. And what did I talk about then? You talked about the same thing. The same thing, yes. Yeah. So can you see how there was many opportunities offered to you? But I didn't recognise you. Correct. But I can feel the feelings of this. Correct. And so you sort of see, you saw me at the time as just another person in the sixth dimension. Yeah. That's how you saw me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And so you felt there was no need to listen. But I was drawn to you. Yeah. And the reason why you were drawn because of the love, you see, that exists. Yeah. And this is why the love of God is so important. Without the love of God, nobody would ever progress beyond the sixth dimension. Yeah. In other words, nobody would ever progress beyond the first dimension that God created, which was the sixth dimension. Right. And there'd be no other dimensions, in fact, if nobody had ever received God's love. But the fact is that God offered God's love again and, and we received it and there's many millions of people now who have received it and who are enjoying the benefits of it. And you can speak with any of those people. If you have a longing to speak with them, they'll come to you and speak with you about God's love. They'd be very happy to do so. You've opened up a whole new world. Yeah. So my suggestion is to allow the emotions to flow, allow yourself to be overwhelmed. It'll feel relieving it will not feel as difficult as you've been trying to attempt in the past because, it, you know, obviously intellectual development and forcing your emotions is a very, very hard process because the God created the soul to be dominant. God created the emotions to be dominant. So it's very, very hard to suppress them, very hard to deny them, very hard to resist them. And that requires a large exercise of your will to do that. And my suggestion is to let, let that stop, you know, like stop doing that to yourself Allow these emotions to flow. Don't be too concerned about where it takes you because there are times that it's going to take you back to the very beginnings of your life. Mm. And you need to allow that to occur so that you can release these emotions. And, uh, and once you get through those things, you will understand new things that you never understood before. In a way, that feels relieving. Mm. It I is quite tired of it all. Yes, it is very relieving. And it's, it's great that you feel quite tired of it only after 350 years because there's been many people, as you know, that have been there for tens of thousands of years who are still doing the same thing. Mm. Mm. So much great gratefulness mm. for you. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been lovely to meet you, Alexandra. Meet you in person this time, first one-on-one, yes. -on -one, uh, rather than you seeing me at a distance, as you have done in the past. <laughs> I've always been the one peering over. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes these seminars in the spirit world are fairly large, of course. And sometimes it's very hard to see who's speaking, but... Um, they still exist. Yes, yes, of course. And we'll continue to do so until God feels the process of sharing this truth has been exhausted. Thank you. Mm. I'm dear to go with my friends. Yes. I'm sure they'll like to tell you what's been happening in the four, last four years of their life. <laughs> yeah, they've got a lot to show. Yes. And they'll, they'll want to show you things in pictures, but they'll want to show you things about how they felt as well, not just in pictures and words, but they want to show you the feeling. So they want to transmit to you the feeling that they had going through this process. Does that make sense? And if you allow yourself to let them do that, you'll find you'll go through some feelings of your own and that'll help you immensely to make rapid progress into the other dimensions. Hmm. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm sure we're going to speak again. Yeah, sure. We, there's plenty of opportunities in my sleep state and also on, here, on Earth, isn't there? Mm. Plus, uh, you know, there's a form of, some many forms of me in the spirit world at the moment. Um, obviously, we can create many bodies. And so we get to interact with many people in the spirit world in all different dimensions. And so I'm sure we'll catch up one of those ways as well if, if we want. Yes, I definitely do. All... And some of the other groups who are still uncertain about what you say. Yes, but of course. 
but they can mm. they can feel you. And well, they can feel that I'm sincere, and yes. they can feel that I'm honest. They just feel a little bit that I might be deluded. <laughs> mm. And uh, and I can assure you that the spirits who were with you four years ago can see that I wasn't deluded, mm. and they can see, can't they, that you know there were there were there was truth in what was being said to them, and they've now obtained personal truth. They've now obtained personal proof of the information that was given to them four years ago. So, you know, the only reason why we keep ourselves locked up and stagnant is because we deny truth that comes to us. Mm. That's the only reason why. Okay. And so my suggestion to you is stop the process of denial of the truth that comes to you. Allow it to come to you and to conceive intellectually that from a logical perspective, there may be parts of your soul that you've yet to examine and there may be parts of your soul that you're yet to open and there may be parts of your soul that you're yet to develop and at least allow for that possibility it makes sense that in an infinite universe that there would be that possibility and what I'm suggesting to you is that there is this way of developing a part of your soul that has yet to be developed and uh, and my suggestion is to follow the advice of the spirits who are now with you to develop that part of your soul and you'll find that that soul can be developed infinitely it won't be limited to the sixth dimension so long as i follow this process so long as you follow the process and so long as you desire to be closer to god you will have infinite progress mm. god's an infinite being and therefore we will just continue to approach god through this infinite progression if we desire to shut it all down if we shut down our soul which is what you've been doing quite intensely for many years if you desire to shut down your soul, you'll be limited in your development to the sixth dimension. Hmm. And you will not be able to experience the other beautiful experiences that the soul who becomes at one with God can experience. I have some trepidation in that. But I also have But remember that all of the trepidation you feel is all about your false beliefs imbibed when you're on earth. Hmm. They're not truths about God. So you remind yourself, this is how you can use your mind, by reminding yourself that even though you've got to go through these feelings, because these feelings have to come out of you somehow, and the only way they can come out of you is by, by, by you go, you're going through them. Once you've gone through these feelings, and even while you're going through these feelings, you need to remind yourself that it's not logical that God is an unloving being. Mm. It makes sense that God is a loving being, and God is not ever reduced. If you think about it, you, you are in development far superior to any person on earth, or most, almost all people on earth. Is mm. that not true? Yes. And your development is far superior in love. In other words, you, you can see that the actions taken on earth are very unloving. You but can see that the actions taken in your childhood by your parents are very unloving. And the motivations are quite unloving. And the motivations are quite selfish and unloving. I, mm. I agree. You can see all of that already, right? Now, if you can see it, surely someone who is infinitely more developed than yourself, which is God, can see it. And therefore, God must be far more loving than you are. Mm. And God wants to know every one of his children. Wants to not only know every one of his children, but wants every one of his children to know him. Mm. In other words, God wants to communicate with every one of his children. God wants to have every one of his children feel her love. A true relationship. A true relationship. A, a relationship that goes back and forward. God wants to expose all of the secrets of the universe to every one of God's children. That interests me more. Mm. Mm. God, God is like a loving parent, more loving than the, the average parent on earth. <laughs> and that would make sense, surely, logically. I'll hold on to the belief that that's attainable. Mm. And allow yourself to go through these emotional beliefs that it's not. Allow yourself to feel the feelings you have about God that came from your earth teachings. The, the feelings you have about God that came from your mum and dad's punishment of you. I can see what I do. I, I seek for the positive assurance and not allow myself to. Correct. One of the things you need to come to understand about the soul is that the soul, while it retains the negative emotion inside of you, it will, you will not be able to absorb the positive emotion. So while you might intellectually have a positive thought, you will not emotionally feel it unless the emotion that's negative releases from you. Does that make sense? Yes. So an emotion on one subject must release from you before a truth on the same subject can enter you. An emotion about one subject must release from you with regard to love 
before the love on that same subject can enter you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So a process of release has to be engaged. Okay. Yeah. And that the key is to have enough courage and bravery to go through that process. Remembering, of course, you've got many helpers, spirit, you know, people who are your friends in the spirit world who are helping you, but you've also got God wanting to help you through that process. Mm. So you're not alone going through the process, even at times you might think you are, but you're not. But the emotions are all inside of you, so they have to be exper exper experienced by you only. Nobody else can experience your emotions for you. Mm. Nobody else can release your feelings that are, that are sad and, and afraid and shamed and all of those feelings that are what you classify as negative feelings that you've been under control, had control of up until now. Nobody else can let go of them for you. Only you can do that. So every time you talk about that, I just automatically start to get heavy. And... You know they're there, right? You mm. can feel they're there. They're so there. let yourself feel them. Okay. Yeah, let yourself go through them. Understand that that's a part of this, this way towards God. And when you go through them and let go of them, when you long for God's love, some of your God's love will enter you. And then you'll feel much happier after, afterwards. And you'll understand more things than you ever understood before. It's a beautiful description. It is. Mm. Yeah. But there's feeling behind it too. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. It's a pleasure. And I hope you enjoy that process because it is a... You, you'll find that after a while you will enjoy the process. At the beginning it's a bit scary, you know, because you get overwhelmed emotionally and it's not something that you've been used to doing for a long period of time and so it's a bit scary. But, but the beauty is if you allow yourself to go through the process, you'll start to enjoy it and you'll start to feel alive, you know, like you'll feel very different to what you've felt up to now and particularly for the last few years in the spirit world. Mm. That would be really nice. Yeah. Because you know there's been this developing sort of feeling of dissatisfaction, hasn't there, over the last few years? Yeah, there has. Yeah, and this is the, this is the reason why. To a degree, it's quite worthless. Mm. Yeah. F from a feeling perspective. Correct. Even though you've progressed to the sixth sphere and show love to other people, there are still these emotions in you that need to come out. Mm. I didn't feel the sense of achievement I did mm. feel when I originally got here. Yeah. And that's the power of truth. Mm. Truth exposes all of the things we do that are out of harmony with God's love. Mm -hmm. mm. And it draws you. It draws you. Mm. Even sometimes unwillingly. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Mm. In other words, it, you feel the pull of it. You feel yeah. the pull of love and truth from God, even when at times we're so resistive. <laughs> yeah, it's quite mm. remarkable. Mm. 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 It's a remarkable, remarkable system God created. You would expect that from the most cleverest person in the universe. <laughs> it just seems to be so many facets. Mm. Never-ending learning curve. And well, it will be never-ending. Yeah, it will be never-ending because God is infinite. So obviously, you know, by definition, our learning will be never-ending. So, just as a final question, mm -hmm. um, will I be able to meet Adam and Eve? They are in the spirit world, in the dimensions above the seventh sphere. And I'm sure if you wanted to have a discussion with them, they'd be happy to come to you and talk to you about what they remember from the beginning of their life on Earth. Mm. And, um, you know, they, there's some unique things they remember that nobody else has had the opportunity of experiencing, obviously, which they'd be able to tell you. And they'd also be able to share with you some of the feelings they had about why they made the effort to be gods rather than to receive God's love. And so, so certainly they'd be happy to come to you, I'm sure. But again, you've got to have a sincere longing for the conversation. Mm. And would they know the answers to why God created the sixth sphere, this environment? They would be able to... Well, everyone in the seventh sphere or above knows the answer to that question. Okay. So you could pretty much ask anybody who's in a brighter condition to yourself and they'd be able to answer that question for you. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need to be Adam and Eve or Ammon and Anne, their name really is. Okay. It doesn't need to be them that answer that question. Yeah, they said they'll guide me. <laughs> You've got plenty of friends around you who want to help you with all the questions you have. And the key is to be open-hearted when you receive the answers to the questions. Yeah. Mm. Well, thank you again. My pleasure. It's been lovely to at last meet you one-on-one. -on -one. It has. <laughs> it's endeared my heart. Yeah.
There I go again. There you go again. That's Bye. okay. You're allowed to you're allowed to cry. Just let yourself do that. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>